Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of how I painted Yellow Rose in Fall. I painted this to celebrate the last rose for my summer garden. I'm using wet on wet, as well as wet on dry, and dry on dry techniques. I demonstrated lost edges, sharp edges, and I also describe how I use accent colors and complementary colors to complete my paintings. I hope you'll enjoy it and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. I decided to paint a beautiful yellow rose that was growing very late in my garden. I figured it would be the last one to bloom. And I wanted to have some pretty bright colors for a rather gloomy day. I begin working on a wet paper and I decided not to sketch first but rather to sketch and paint. I wanted to see what would happen if I put down colors, let them run around a bit, and then came back and tightened things up with some shading. So that was my approach here. I'm pulling out some individual petals and looking at my reference photo that I took of this rose. Shading on a yellow flower can be a little challenging sometimes, so I tried several different color mixtures to see what would work. My first attempt brought in some permanent rose. My second attempt brought in some raw siennas and some yellow ochres, which I think worked a little better too. When I brought in a brown that was too brown, it didn't look right, so I ended up taking it out again. And now I'm coming in with some alizarin crimson to do some shading as well. This rose was in sunlight, so some areas were almost white, and other areas were deeply shaded. So it was a fun and interesting challenge to take on. Petal by petal and section by section on building the rose up. At this point I'm working drier, but you can see the areas that are still wet are just running right into each other. It was a lot of action right from the very beginning with this painting. But I was trying some new things and taking some chances and I wanted to see just what would work right and what didn't work and hoping I could fix the things that didn't work. I think it allows for some interest if you let some of the subject, in this case the flower, go off the page as well. So I'm doing that in the lower area. Everything doesn't have to be centered perfectly in an informal picture. Now I'm sort of floating around the paper, finding petals, finding areas of petals, leaving some darks, and leaving some absolute white values. To establish some negative areas, I'm finding where I would like to put some leaves. They are not being painted right next to and touching the flower in most places because I don't want the wet colors to run together. I'm leaving a thin white area between the flower and the leaves, figuring I will paint that in later in the way that looks best to me. I don't need to do it in the beginning. 
where the leaf gets very close to the flower, I'm making it the darkest. And now I've just sprayed everything down again. So I'm back to working wet on the flower. I sprayed everything down again and I'm trying to get some loose leaf structure around the edge of the flower. And what I was blocking out was to try to keep the leaves from running into the flower so I can have some clean yellows on the edge. Now you'll notice I'm putting reds, golds, oranges into the leaves. I've seen that rose leaves have a lot of different colors in their green. Frequently they seem to have a dark alizarin crimson in their green. And I'm starting to structure the individual petals with the colors and the shades and the forms that they have. The folds. And the shadows. Put the color in, make it darker, and then soften. And the way I'm softening is with a damp brush. If I paint next to a line, it will then soften. So much adjusting at this stage because there are lots of complicated petals in this and they have to make some sense to make it look like a rose and not a blob. My brush, in many cases, is very loaded with concentrated color. Again, because when you're working so wet, you know the color will fade and get lighter as it dries. So at this point, there's some glazing going on.
At this point, I'm working toward the edges, trying to establish where I want the rose to end and the sky to begin. Because I've decided I wanted to put in a brilliant blue sky. I thought that would look very pretty with the yellow rose. At the same time, I wanted some of the edges to be almost lost edges, very, very soft as they opened up into the blue sky. I'm putting a barely yellow edge on and then softening the line around it. and continuing to build the forms of the petals. There was a certain section to the left that became quite intense and deep in color. So I began to build that up. Working wet, I found I had to do so many times with many glazes of color waiting for each one to dry completely and then adding more darks. So where a petal would fold over, I would make the shadow darker and then soften along the edge because rose petals are very soft things. Some of the edges are painted a little harder and sharper, but many of them I've tried to keep as very, very soft and all the while trying to balance getting the form and structure and shadows of the flower. An interesting challenge. If you've painted roses and complicated flower forms, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> In several cases, when I look back on this flower, in between painting sessions, I'll see that I've overpainted some petals or that I need to enhance areas to make them more clear. In one case, I painted too many petals and had to go back and remove them with scrubbing and blotting entirely. And then I'll see areas that should be much lighter and I've made them too dark. So I'll paint in some water and then blot off the excess. I'm beginning to introduce some of the blue that I want for the sky to showcase the orangey yellows of the flower. And blue is a good color to complement those colors. Just as green is a good color to complement the roses and pinks in this flower. So once I'm satisfied that the form of the rose is correct, I can begin to dance with the colors complementing each other 
and the positive and negative aspects of the flower, bringing in the darker greens to pop the lighter colors of the yellow rose. And another glaze of color in the darker pink areas. Softening the petals on the right where there seem to be too many for the flower. deepening the shadows in some spots and not all. Gives the flower a little more depth. And what I found I really have to watch in painting a yellow rose like this is not getting any of my yellows dirty because if they get dirty they start to look like mustard and it's not attractive in a rose. So I'm using a lot of clean water and a lot of brush rinsing when I'm painting my yellows. Yellow is a pale color and it gets corrupted with other colors quickly. Once it's not fresh anymore on your paper, <clears throat> there's not a lot you can do to get it back. I'm using Hooker's Green to build up my greens. And I've just used my hand to block the flower and leaves to some extent and begin to block in the blues for the sky. <clears throat> Mainly using cobalt blue and with just maybe a bit of turquoise blue mixed in with it. And that blue looks fairly nice but it will fade way much so I'll be putting a lot more blue into this wet wet area. And once I've put the blue down, I'm softening the edges of the flower against it because I want them to get lost a little bit or very soft, not sharp, hard edges. You could see I've brought in some oranges and some yellows into the leaves. And here you see me scrubbing out the edges of the rose flowers against the blue so that they will stay soft. I scrub with the water on the brush and then I blot. When you put two colors right next to each other and they're a good complementary match, they really do bounce light to the point where it almost vibrates. It's very exciting to see colors together like that. And then the shadow colors against the light colored rose, the shadows of the green leaves, 
really make it pop with some accents as well. And then I dulled down the greens with some sap green and with some alizarin crimson, which is a good complement for the green. And when you mix complementary colors together directly, they dull each other out. And that's what green and red will do for each other. I decided to add some more of those vivid pink reds in the rose because I like what they're doing with the green. So what you're seeing is some vermilion, some permanent rose, and some alizarin crimson in varying mixtures. And you can see how that's giving me some more accent within the rose flower itself. I'm softening the edges of the petals again against the blue sky. where the sunlight is hitting these leaf petals and making them so pale. And I'm softening the edge of the leaves as well as they move back in space and get less well-defined. My leaves are not regular in shape, and I think that's adding to the interest for this composition. It's what I was aiming for anyway. I'm at the point where I'm blocking off the sides of the paper one by one to see which areas need more work. Blocking off side to side like this shows me some areas for sure that need some development or some fixing. At this point I'm taking off some color on the edge of that petal to soften it. and then adding shading but softening the edges with my roses. And 
at some of the deep V's in shadows. I'm making just a little darker. Fine-tuning the leaves on the right. Softening a little bit on the lower area. And seeing if I need another leaf. Using a piece of paper in a leaf color and finding where it should go. And with the signature it's done. I hope you enjoyed my video, Yellow Rose in Fall. Give it a like and a thumbs up and subscribe below. Ring the bell so you don't miss the next one. Also below you can see some links to the products I use, my Facebook art page, as well as my blog and my products page. I'll see you next video.